Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Argo Synonymous. It's time for another deck tech. We are going to talk about Earth, Forest, Fearsome, Critter, Tribal. This is a very satisfying deck to play. A lot of the beasties and spells, everything are low casting cost things. So you are guaranteed to get your stuff on the board and then they all kind of juice each other up so you can overwhelm your opponent just by swarming them and messing with their stuff with these cool little abilities that we're going to go over right now. So starting with the beasties, I couldn't make a fearsome, tri a fearsome critter tribal deck without throwing a squonk in it. So we're, we're gonna have one squonk. Um, also because this gives you an opportunity to find out if your opponent can cry tears on command. To specify, I don't accept like watery eyes. I think if you're gonna, if you're gonna cry tear, like it has to go down the cheek. Unassisted, tear down the cheek and fine. So squonk is, is a one cost, 30 life point, 30 damage beastie that has tribal boost, with which is great. Um, if you can cry tears, you can actually juice them up, but if your opponent cries tears, he just like leaves the battlefield, which is unfortunate, and goes to the afterlife, which is kind of like outside the game. Anyway, there's our squonk. Next, I'm gonna throw three Gumbaroos in here. Gumbaroo's fantastic. By the way, if you haven't seen the spoiler, the new artwork for Nightfall, Gumbaroo got a reprint, and the artwork is, is really on point with how, how I feel Gumbaru probably is like his personality. He's just got so much to show for himself. Again, Gumbaru is an amazing one drop. It's a one drop forest with 30 life points. It has the tribal boost, so it'll get pumped up 10 life points and 10 damage for every other fearsome beastie critter in the arena. Gumbaru is pretty amazing because you reduce all combat damage, he would take to zero. He's just invulnerable to combat damage, so they have to kill him with a spell or or some other kind of effect. The, the weakness though is that if he gets hit with fire damage, he blows up and then you take 50 damage, like the controller takes 50 damage. But you know, there's there's 10 different aura types and only one of them is fire, right? So I mean, essentially Gumbaru most of the time is going to do really, really well for you and he's only one drop. In addition to that, you can choose to reduce his damage to zero and you can bounce a defending beastie back into the opponent's hand, AKA back into their chapter. So Gumbaru is great, a little bit of removal, and some invulnerability makes Gumbaru a fantastic card to put in a Fearsome Critter Tribal deck. Next, we're gonna go to another kind of removal utility BC. This is Roperite. Meet Roperite, or Reach Around, I guess. So he's another one drop forest BC. 30 life points, 15 damage. Again, we have tribal boost, so they all kind of pump each other up. So even though they're all coming out at one, these things can get real big real fast. Uh, which is just, this can be a very overwhelming deck to play against, which is wonderful. What this guy does is you can exhaust, sorry, you can fatigue Rope Right, which is means turns it sideways, to remove flight from target BC. So all this does is because you don't have a whole lot of flight in here, um, if your opponent is trying to keep some BC up in the air, which means you can't attack it unless you have an ABC that also has flight. Your Roperite comes in and can knock it out of the sky for just long enough for one of your other things to go in and clean it up. So Roperite's in there as a one drop. Fearsome Beastie, we've got five of them. Fearsome Critter for just some removal of flight beasties. Oh, and he's in the glare. Don't sit in the glare, Roperite. There we go. All right, next we're gonna do uh, the Almighty Cactus Cat. I make fun of Cactus Cat quite a bit because it's just low hanging fruit, it's easy to do. And then I went and I put six of them in this deck. So Cactus Cat is, uh, is actually really good. It's a two drop earth fearsome critter BC. Six per spell book and we just went to the, to the nines here. Cactus Cat can uh, gain 50 damage if you have desert as a Terra in play or if you're playing in an actual desert. So for you like, Arizona, New Mexico, whatever, you know, you peoples, or like a lot of California probably qualify as a desert. Um, you know, play your cactus cats and just, just juice it up. And if you don't have an actual desert nearby, then drop one in with a Terra, because, uh, boop, there we go. Terra can do the job for you. Cactus cats are insane because they're, it's only a two drop. They have 40 life points and 30 damage, which is already good. But then they pump each other up with the tribal boost, the uh, fearsome critter tribal boost. And then if, a, if you drop a desert down and they get plus 50, that's crazy. I mean, uh, as a two drop, if you manage to do a desert and you have another one drop out, it's already plus 10. So it's 40 plus 50. You've got like a 90 damage two drop on turn two without too much difficulty, which is pretty wild. Anyway, that's it. So that's why we just went nuts with cactus cats and went all six. Cactus Cats for our crazy fearsome critters. Um, I had to put two Tripaderos in here. 
Tripper Darrow is like a little bit of a sniper because um, he has unblockable and he has fleet. So fleet means he comes into play awakened. He doesn't come into play fatigued. So he can attack the turn he comes into play. That's a little speed boot. And then he has uh, this, this thing here means he can't be defended against. So basically if your opponent has some beastie that they're trying to protect, like they're hiding behind other stuff, your Tripadero comes down. Yeah, it only has 10 damage, but it's pumped up by all your other fearsome critters because it has tribal boost. So maybe it comes down as a 30 or a 40 or even a 50, who knows. And then it has fleet, so it just can rush in and kill and just remove another beastie. So really quite a bit of removal. You know, when you look at Gumbaru can bounce things back to hand. Uh, the Cactus Cat's just a beat stick. The Roperites, though, are taking out things with flight. Squonk's just here for the here for the free vibes. And Trippo's your sniper. You're doing pretty good on removal, but we're not done with beasties yet. We've got to have the king of the fearsome beasties, the Snallygaster. Snallygaster uh, also gets plus 10 damage for every beastie fearsome critter in the arena. So because this is coming out turn 7, you, you hopefully have quite a few of these first and critters out by then. And then Snally just comes out and just owns the show. Snally has flight and can also snipe things with this unblockable. And 90 life points, this thing can last pretty well. Also, anytime a beastie dragon, of which Snally Gaster is one, deals more than 50 damage, which it probably will because it's being juiced up, um, it gains 25 life points. So it can actually sort of regenerate itself as it, as it beats things into oblivion. There's your crazy, crazy, crazy Snallygaster. Now let's go into the utility. So those are our beasties, and we already talked about desert to pump up our cactus cats. Um, we're gonna have some aura facts in here, starting with Chaos Crystal. So I, I often do not put Chaos Crystal in mono aura decks because it's squishy uh, and you just don't need it. These are, I personally think Chaos Crystals, I mean, it's a great card, no doubt, and it's gorgeous too, but you know, these give you two, Chaos gives you three, these gives you two, and they have twice the life points. So if you're playing mono, you know, these, these are fantastic. But when you have like a dual color deck like this, Chaos Crystal really is essential. Or it's not essential, but it's really, really good. So we're going to throw our Chaos Crystal in here um, to give ourselves three aura of any type. We're going to put in two Earth Cores into here to give ourselves two aura of the Earth, uh, of the earth elements. So I, why did I pick Earth and not Forest? Because all of our forest beasties only cost one, right? But we have a couple of two cost earth things. These All six of these cactus cats all require two earth. And then we also have a spell in here that requires, you know, a little extra earth. Like you want to have as much earth as you can to remove things. So that's why we have earth cores and we don't have forest gods amber in here. Moving on, we're going to have a potion, lightning in a bottle. It is lightning, but who cares? Because, you know, it doesn't, doesn't say we can't use it. And this just, again, it just gives it gives you the ability to swing with something the turn you bring it into play. So, you know, you drop a, a Cactus Cat. And let's say he's juiced up with a Desert. And he's got some huge damage output potential. But he comes into play fatigued. Boom, you Lightning in a bottle it. It awakens. And then you can swing with your Cactus Cat. Maybe for the game. Moving on, of course, every deck needs to have a couple of bookmarks because you pay one, you draw two cards, and it increases the consistency of your deck, gives you a little bit of extra draw power. Because this is um, a forest deck, you have to have growth. Growth is insane. It's insane. It's the only two-cost forest thing in the deck. So Chaos Crystal is going to help us get this out. And then, of course, we have six uh, forest aura that we'll talk about later. Growth just it, it refills your whole hand. You, you have to play it. If you're playing Forest, you, you have to play Growth. If you're not, you know, DM me and we'll talk. Power Up Red has to be in here too. It's just so good. It's so good. You know, your Beastie gets plus 100 life points, plus 100 damage. I mean, it's crazy. Power Up Red is insane. And you have the option of when you play it, you can go, eh, introducing Power Up Red. And then just juice whatever you've got up to high heaven. Going into a little bit more removal... This is what I was talking about. This is why we have the Earth cores in here is for our Rock Rain. Rock Rain, um, you can pay X, right? And it's X Earth Aura. And the way it works, so it, is, it has to be all Earth Aura. You can't like mix it up with the Forest, which is why we have Earth's Core. Chaos Crystal is going to help you too. Essentially, this is a scalable removal spell. So you're just going to do um, X times 10 damage to target Beastie or Artifact. It's nice that it's Beastie or Artifact. Gives you a little bit of versatility. You can kill your opponent's Chaos Crystal. You might side deck an extra Rock Rain if you need to. You could side deck a couple of them because you got six per spell book. So if you need more removal, you could absolutely like take out some Fearsome Critters 
and put in some more rock rain and like nobody would fault you for it. Similarly, if you find yourself needing a little bit more haste, a little bit more fleet, I mean, you could like sub out a fearsome critter and put in another one more lightning in a bottle or whatever you need. For, uh, for the aura, in this one, I do five earth aura and I do six forest aura because I already have two earth's core, which kind of helps me get my earth out the door. And then, you know, you don't want to not have any forest. Again, all of your forest only requires one, which is great. So, you know, you're probably going to get one except for growth. That's the only thing you need two for. So if you're really unlucky in a game, you might only end up somehow only getting one forest aura and then you're sitting on a growth for a while while you die. But most of the time you're going to hit two growth or sorry, two forest aura, get your growth out and be good to go. So there you go. There is fearsome critter tribal. It's really fun. It's a fun deck to play. You know, swarming your opponent is fun. Watching little things turn into big things is fun. The characters are fun. Maybe you get your opponent to cry for you, which would be nice. <laughs> or you can cry for them, however you want to do it. And yeah, let me know. Let me know if you have your own take on the Fearsome Critter Tribal deck. Um, I know there's, you know, there's, everyone's got their own take on it, which is awesome. You should all tailor things to your own play style and your own, you know, concept of what's fun and all that. And we'll just, we'll, I'm, I'm excited to see it. Uh, we're going to keep doing these deck techs to kind of show people, you know, give, give them some ideas and whatnot. And let me know if you want to see a certain thing. If you have an element you like that you want to see a deck for, or if you want to see some, do you want to see some games? Do you want to see some play? And that's all I've got, MetaFam. Thank you for stopping by. Shout out to the Argos Anon patrons. You dudes are awesome. Thank you for your support. I will catch you next time. Argos out.